Welcome to Scream History, where we delve into the fascinating and often dark corners of world history. Today, we're exploring the life and legacy of one of the most infamous leaders of the 20th century, Joseph Stalin. Born Joseph Vissarionovich Jugashvili on December 18, 1878, in Gori, Georgia, Joseph Stalin spent his early years in troubled times. Vissarion, his father, was a cobbler by trade and an often drunk malcontent. Of course, this likely left many deep and lasting scars on the young Stalin. His mother, Kativan, would not have it that her son would ever live in such circumstances and forced him into the desire to have a religious education. Then he fell ill with smallpox at the age of seven and further malforms his face and an auto accident that badly mangled one of his arms but healed in a state of horrible atrophy made him a less than handsome curiosity. However, he was a brilliant student and eventually earned a scholarship to Tiflis Theological Seminary. It is while at the seminary that he was introduced to the literature of Marxist ideology, which set off a passion for revolutionary ideology. In 1899, he dropped out of the seminary due to the realization that he was abandoning religiosity to mark secularism as he became a member of the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party. This party was to split soon after into the Mensheviks and Bolsheviks, which Stalin supported under Lenin's leadership. His revolutionary activities saw him organize strikes, propagandizing and a keen robber and participate in bank robberies in raising finances for the party, and is best remembered for the 1907 Tiflis bank heist, where many people were killed. The 1917 Russian Revolution heralded the downfall of the Romanovs and the ascent to power of the Bolsheviks. The October Revolution under Lenin installed a Soviet government. It was this trusted status that led to Comrade Stalin being made a commissar of nationalities in charge of the various ethnic groups that made up the new Soviet country. Civil war followed from 1917 to 1922, the Red Army combating the anti-Bolshevik White Army, with the Bolsheviks coming out on top as the victors, having centralized all Soviet power. He managed to outmaneuver his main rival for the job after Lenin's death in 1924. Indeed, Trotsky was widely considered Lenin's logical successor, the principal actor of the revolution, and head of the Red Army. Stalin managed to push aside even this claim by his command of the party apparatus and his tactical alliances. By 1929, Trotsky was exiled, and Stalin was in command. The murder of Trotsky in Mexico City in 1940 was symbolic of how far the dictator was prepared to go to eliminate any kind of challenge to his power. We all know that the Great Purge, initiated by Stalin in 1936, was a period where political repression was used and millions of people were put to death and imprisoned. Bolsheviks, military officials, and ordinary citizens were included in the list of purgs. Stalin's secret police and the NKVD made the purges that involved grabbing people, organizing show trials, and torturing them. It included the internationally notorious Moscow trials whereby former top officials were convicted of crimes they had never committed before facing the execution squad. Stalin's enforced collectivization and grain requisitioning policies ended up in the Holodomor, genocide and famine in Ukraine during the period of 1932-1933. Peasants were forced to give up their produce and they were left with nothing in their hands. Those who resisted were punished severely. Most importantly, this was part of Stalin's efforts to break Ukrainian nationalistic spirits and also to obtain control over the food products in the region. Estimates of people dead vary from 3 to 7 million. There was, of course, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact of 1939, the non-aggression treaty with Nazi Germany that shocked the world. The pact included secret protocols dividing Eastern Europe into spheres of influence. That alliance was broken at the same time. As in 1941, Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union. The Soviet leader had been caught totally off guard, resulting in immense losses for the Soviet Union from the first wave. But from the larger perspective, small bits of the Siege of Leningrad and the Battle of Stalingrad were the crucial turning points that indicated the superpowers of the Soviet Union to the world, taking a twist that turned the tide of the Nazi offensive. Stalin included many ethnicities in accusations of collaborating with the Nazis during World War II. The conditions under which the Crimean Tatars were deported to Central Asia were rough. Some 200,000 were deported, 
and about half of them died from starvation, diseases, and harsh weather. Other groups like the Chechens, Ingush, and Volga Germans went through similar fates. All of this was made part of Stalin's policy of mass deportations. He did it to fortify his control and power. After the war, Stalin launched the Great Reconstruction Plan, the Fourth Five-Year Plan, which focused on heavy industry and military power. The Cold War began to take shape when Stalin tried to expand his influence in Eastern Europe by planting satellite states and initiating tension with the West. At home, he created an epoch of repression, censorship, and a cult tale turning him into the father of the nation. His death on 5th March 1953 due to a stroke marked the end of an era. The fact that after his death there was a struggle over who would succeed him, eventually with Nikita Khrushchev among his close aides, did not do much to erase his legacy. In 1956, Khrushchev gave his secret speech denouncing Stalin's abuses and initiating a de-Stalinization process, whereby the repressive apparatus and cult of personality that had characterized Stalin's rule was to be done away with. Stalin's legacy is very ambiguous and controversial. On the one hand, his efforts placed the USSR among the superpowers of the world. And on the other hand, he created up to a hundred million deaths and suffering, covering lots of millions of lives and worsening the quality of life. His policies and further ramifications still lie upon the present day. That's why most of the debates were so heated. To know and comprehend the life and rule of Stalin means to understand the history of the whole of the 20th century. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with fellow history enthusiasts. Your support helps us keep these fascinating stories alive. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss an episode. Have any thoughts, questions, or topics you'd love to see covered? Drop them in the comments below. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep the spirit of history alive. Take care, and see you soon.